Where do we begin? Before we tell the stories that make up world history, it is useful to ask, where do we begin? Where did our human stories start? Homo sapiens is part of a group called hominids, which were the earliest human-like creatures. Based on archaeological and anthropological evidence, we think that hominids diverged from other primates somewhere between 2.5 and 4 million years ago in eastern and southern Africa. Though there was a degree of diversity among the hominid family, they all shared the trait of bipedalism, or the ability to walk upright on two legs. Evolution Scientists have several theories about why early hominids evolved. 1. The aridity hypothesis, suggests that early hominids were more suited to dry climates and evolved as the Africa's dry savanna regions expanded. According to the savanna hypothesis, early tree-dwelling hominids may have been pushed out of their homes as environmental changes caused the forest regions to shrink and the size of the savanna expand. These changes, according to the savanna hypothesis, may have caused them to adapt to living on the ground and walking upright instead of climbing. Hominids continue to evolve and develop unique characteristics. Their brain capacities increased, and approximately 2.3 million years ago, a hominid known as Homo habilis began to make and use simple tools. By a million years ago, some hominid species, particularly Homo erectus, began to migrate out of Africa and into Eurasia, where they began to make other advances like controlling fire. Though there were once many kinds of hominids, only one remains, Homo sapiens. Extinction is a normal part of evolution, and scientists continue to theorize why other hominid species didn't survive. We do have some clues as to why some species were less successful at surviving than others, such as an inability to cope with competition for food, changes in climate, and volcanic eruptions. Migration and the peopling of the Earth How and why? Between 70,000 and 100,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began migrating from the African continent and populating parts of Europe and Asia. They reached the Australian continent in canoes sometime between 35,000 and 65,000 years ago. Scientists studying land masses and climate know that the Pleistocene Ice Age created a land bridge that connected Asia and North America, Alaska, over 13,000 years ago. A widely accepted migration theory is that people crossed this land bridge and eventually migrated into North and South America. How were our ancestors able to achieve this feat, and why did they make the decision to leave their homes? The development of language around 50,000 years ago allowed people to make plans, solve problems, and organize effectively. We can't be sure of the exact reasons humans first migrated off of the African continent, but it was likely correlated with a depletion of resources, like food, in their regions and competition for those resources. Once humans were able to communicate these concerns and make plans, they could assess together whether the pressures in their current home outweighed the risk of leaving to find a new one. Adaptation and Effects on Nature When humans migrated from Africa to colder climates, they made clothing out of animal skins and constructed fires to keep themselves warm, often, they burned fires continuously through the winter. Sophisticated weapons, such as spears and bows and arrows, allowed them to kill large mammals efficiently. Along with changing climates, these hunting methods contributed to the extinction of giant land mammals such as mammoths, giant kangaroos, and mastodons. Fewer giant mammals, in turn, limited hunters available prey. In addition to hunting animals and killing them out of self-defense, humans began to use the Earth's resources in new ways when they constructed semi-permanent settlements. Humans started shifting from nomadic lifestyles to fixed homes, using the natural resources there. Semi-permanent settlements would be the building blocks of established communities and the development of agricultural practices. The Early Civilization Mesopotamia and Egypt, 
3100 BC. In about 3200 BC the two earliest civilizations develop in the region where Southwest Asia joins Northeast Africa. Great rivers are a crucial part of the story. The Sumerians settle in what is now southern Iraq, between the mouths of the Euphrates and the Tigris. Egypt develops in the long narrow strip of the Nile Valley. Rivers offer two main advantages to a developing civilization. They provide water to irrigate the fields, and they offer the easiest method of transport for a society without paved roads. Rivers will play an equally important role in two other early civilizations, those of the Indus and of northern China. The Indus, 2500 BC. It is not known whether contact with Mesopotamia inspires the first civilization of India or whether it is a spontaneous local development, but by about 2500 BC the Neolithic villages along the banks of the Indus are on the verge of combining into a unified and sophisticated culture. The Indus civilization, with its two large cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, expands over a larger region than Egypt and Mesopotamia combined. It will survive, in a remarkably consistent form, for about 1000 years. The Aegean, 2000 BC. The next region to develop a distinctive civilization centers on the Aegean Sea. The bays and inlets of the rugged coastal regions of Greece, and the many small islands strung like pearls across this relatively sheltered sea, combine to make this an ideal area for trade, and piracy, among people whose levels of nautical skill make short hops a necessary precaution. The Aegean civilization stands at the start of the very lively tradition of Mediterranean culture. It begins in the large island which is perfectly placed to guard the entrance to the Aegean, Crete. China, 1600 BC. The longest consistent civilization in the human story so far is that of China. This vast eastern empire seems set apart from the rest of the world, fiercely proud of its own traditions, resisting foreign influences. Its history begins in a characteristically independent manner. There are no identifiable precedents for the civilization of the Shang dynasty, which emerges in China in about 1600 BC. Its superb bronze vessels seem to achieve an instant technological perfection. Its written texts introduce characters recognizably related to Chinese writing today. This is a civilization which begins as it will continue, with confidence. America, 1200 BC. Around this time the earliest American civilizations have their beginnings, with the Almecs in Central America and the Chavin in the Andes. Both these cultures develop large towns, centered on temples. Both are now famous for their sculpture. And each, in its own region, is at the start of a succession of civilizations leading directly to the two which are discovered and destroyed in the 16th century by the Spanish, the Aztecs in Central America and the Incas in the Andes. The Mediterranean, from 1000 BC. The first distinctively Mediterranean civilization, that of the Aegeans, comes to a sudden and still unexplained end in around 1200 BC. Some 200 years later an energetic seafaring people, the Phoenicians, become extensive traders. From their base in Lebanon they establish colonies along the coast of Africa and even into the Atlantic. Their example, as Mediterranean imperialists, will be followed by the Greeks and then by the Romans. The Mediterranean becomes the world's most creative arena for the clash and synthesis of civilizations, a status which it has never entirely lost. Regional Civilizations, AD 400 to 1500. With the dominance of Greece and Rome in the West, both successfully managing a transition from pagan to Christian empires, of China in the East, and of strongly individual cultures in Central and South America, each successive civilization in any region tends at this time to be a variation on local traditions. But sometimes there are upheavals which introduce an entirely new culture within already long civilized parts of the world. 
one such is Islam. The establishment of the Caliphate in Damascus and then Baghdad leads to distinctively Muslim civilizations in an unbroken belt from North Africa to North India. Global Civilization, 16th to 20th Century The first sustained contact between Europe and America, in the 16th century, opens the door to a new concept, worldwide civilizations, evolving through colonies and empires. Spanish civilization is exported to Latin America. English culture spreads even further, in an empire which includes India, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and eventually many parts of Africa. From the 16th to the 19th century it is this imperial impulse which carries European civilization round the world, often as a thin veneer over older and very robust local cultures. But by the 20th century there are different forces at work. For much of the 20th century ideology has been the driving force in the export of two very different concepts of civilization, American capitalism and Russian communism. At the same time mass communication has made it possible to export a region's popular culture to the rest of the world, notably that of America through radio, cinema, and television. Other influences, whether multinational companies or the internet, have a similar effect. The danger is of a worldwide sameness. But there is a corresponding benefit. Within economic limits, human communities are now free as never before to adopt the aspects of civilization which appeal to them, regardless of where they happen to be on the planet.